an honor to be with all of you tonight. Stephen, CBC Chair, and Terry, thank you very much for your Foundation's co-chair. And Senator Warnock, Congressman Plaskett, and, uh, and the evening's chairs, look, the CBC member staff and alum here include those who serve across my administration, like Secretary of Housing and Urban Affairs, great Marsha Fudge, who's joined by several other cabinet. This is it. They are finally ready for action. The Republicans in House have released a brand new term, short term bill, and the legislation will avert a government shutdown from happening. Two critical factions of the Republican conference reached an agreement on a bill to avoid a government shutdown just for another month. It cuts discretionary spending for the duration, along with the bulk of a House GOP bill to make major policy change. The hope is that to bring the continued resolution deal to the floor. It would actually avoid a shutdown by funding the government through October 31st. Keeping the fence and the Department of Veteran Affairs at current levels while cutting all discretionary spending by 8%. The agreement is also to pass an appropriations bill to fund the Department of Defense for 2024. Now, House Republicans have actually forced to punt the plan to put the Department of Defense bill on the House floor last week. It's due to hardline conservatives planning to sink the procedural vote to allow for its consideration. But it is worth noting that this bill should pass in the House. It could get a rid mid rid of a major internal GOP challenge for Kim McCarthy. It's unclear whether the bill will get enough votes to pass the House, and without Democratic support, McCarthy can afford no more than four defections. Republican representatives have actually told the Hill that he would not vote for the Republican bills, actually thinking that he doesn't think the votes will actually get enough to pass. And representatives like Ralph Norman have actually laid out a series of questions following the proposal, bringing up the long-time request from hardline conservatives to further cut top-line spending across all 12 appropriation bills. Congressional leaders of both parties and chambers are aiming to pass a continuing resolution to buy more time to complete their appropriations process, the regular order, which includes passing all 12 appropriations bills and getting them signed to law. Both chambers, however, are far behind, and the House has only cleared one measure, and the Senate has passed none. But the clock is ticking, included in the debt ceiling limit. Now, in June was a provision that said if all 12 appropriation bills are not passed by January 1st, a 1% cut would be made across all shutdowns. The Senate is marking up its bill in line with the caps that is set in the debt limit deal, plus roughly $14 billion in additional emergency funding. While the House is moving ahead at levels far lower than the debt limit, Kevin McCarthy indicates that he would bring the defense bill to the floor. He projected optimism about getting an agreement this week. Since kicking off its actually toughest inflation fighting campaign, the Federal Reserve has watched a rate of inflation fall by more than half a percent. Officials are nowhere near ready to say they're finished battling inflation, but the U.S. economy's continuing prosperity is a sign that they may be able to cause minimal economic impact. It's a shift from just how dire or strong the economic looked. The economic status looked more than a year ago for Jerome Powell. The Fed's key benchmark rate is restricting the economy with the most force in more than a decade often referred to as the real deal of level interest. The inflation-adjusted way of assessing borrowing costs may be the Fed's most important gauge when deciding how much higher to lift the rates, if at all they want to raise it. Um, and uh, the President looks forward to uh, dis continuing the discussion with the Senator. Uh, he appreciates her good faith uh, engagement over the last few weeks. I would reiterate, as was noted in the statement we put out last week. Um Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. I hope all of you are having a great day so far. Now, the IRS has just released a new payment schedule for millions of Americans. President Biden has broken off infrastructure talks with Republicans. But everybody, do you believe that a fourth stimulus check will be sent out? And do you believe that states should end the federal unemployment benefits? Leave a comment down below saying yes or no. That unbelievably, you know, I hear my Republican colleagues talk about problems and somehow they forget issues like we have the highest rate of childhood poverty of almost any major country on earth. But everybody, President Biden abruptly ended infrastructure talks with Republican senators on Tuesday as Democrats move closer to attempting to pass a bill, a sprawling tax and spending bill this summer, without bipartisan support. In a statement, Republican Senator Shelley Moore Capito stated, I spoke with the President this afternoon, and he ended our infrastructure negotiations. As Republicans, we believe in our nation's infrastructure, which is why our negotiating team, which consisted of the ranking members from the committees of jurisdiction, consistently worked in good faith with President Biden. The White House said Joe Biden will continue outreach to Republicans and that he spoke Tuesday with Republican Senator Bill Cassidy. But the demise of the Capitol-led talks means it is unlikely a package 
would have brought bipartisan buy-in. During an interview on Fox News, Senator Capito said, We missed a real opportunity here for at least 20 Republicans to join with the other Democrats to pass the most robust infrastructure package that we could have. And key sticking points emerged when Republicans refused to consider tax hikes, to pay for Biden's legislation, and demanded that he remove social spending that they said was unrelated to infrastructure. The president wouldn't be spending his time uh, engaging in hours of discussions with Republicans if he didn't think something could come from it. Now, we can't predict what the final outcome is, and we're keeping his only uh, lines in the sand, as you know, Phil, are inaction uh, and uh, raising taxes on Americans making less than $400,000 a year. We know there is there are a lot of Democrats who are eager to move forward, as are we, but we think there are a lot of paths forward where, we can, where it's worth continuing to pursue bipartisan discussion. Senator Capito said that the president President continued to respond with offers that included tax increases, as is paid for, instead of several practical options that would have not been harmful to individuals, families, and small businesses. In her interview, Capito said, Biden's side talks, Biden's talks with fellow Republican Cassidy may have contributed to the demise of the primary GOP talks. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said that President Biden informed Senator Capito today that the latest offer from her group did not beat the essential needs of our country to restore our roads and bridges, prepare us for our clean energy future, and create jobs. According to Saki, President Biden expressed his disappointment that while he was willing to reduce his plan by more than $1 trillion, the Republican group had increased their proposed new investments by only $150 billion. Biden also spoke with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to consult with her on efforts to move forward on an infrastructure jobs package in the House this month. Saki said that Biden spoke with Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer to discuss the need to convene to commence work on the budget resolution process so that legislation to advance the president's economic priorities and tax reform plans can move to the Senate floor in July. Biden is committed to moving his economic legislation through Congress this summer and is pursuing multiple paths to get this done. Some Democrats want to ram Biden's large original package through Congress without any Republican votes using budget reconciliation, as they did back in March to pass Biden's $1.9 trillion stimulus relief bill. Budget, budget reconciliation allows Democrats who control the evenly divided Senate to avoid the usual 60-volt threshold for bills in the upper chamber, but they must maintain unity if they cannot win any Republican support. Now everybody, that is all the news in this video. If you folks found this video useful and helpful, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, share this video with your friends and family, and give this video a like. And tell me your thoughts on President Biden in the comments below. Does he need to pass more stimulus relief? And do you believe that he will help the American people? by sending out a fourth stimulus check. Tell me your thoughts on the work of President Biden, everybody, in the comments below. As always, everybody, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate everyone's amazing